All right, well, good morning there, YouTube. It's been quite a while since I made a video. I know that, and uh, I apologize if you were hoping for more from me, but I, uh, I am working out on the water again. I'm doing the, um, the oyster farming, and I, I've been busy with that. I um, had to clean out my father-in-law's house because he's going to assisted living and that took quite a lot of time there was uh there's a there was a lot of stuff in there that i needed to bring down to rhode island from new hampshire so it, it was like long long days doing that um making this video today uh because i for the past three weeks i've had the covid the um the coronavirus there the COVID-19 and uh, that was that was really quite an experience I didn't uh I mean I've got the you know the the shots the the um what are they called vaccinations uh, as you can see I got it's kind of like a brain fog it's weird um so I've got those, and I guess um, if I didn't have those, it would have been much worse. And uh, I tell you what, it was still pretty bad. Um, it, it it just beat the hell out of me. Like I I've never felt that sick in my life. And I had years ago when I was still on the ambulance, I had um, I had problems with my colon. And uh, there were actually little pinholes in my colon because I had the diverticulitis. And um, I was septic. Like, I, the, the stuff that was in my colon that's supposed to stay in my colon and then go out when I go to the bathroom was coming through these holes and getting into my gut and making me sick. And um, I did not feel as sick as I did with COVID then. Uh, COVID, uh, this, it's been, I, I honestly, I, I, I can't even put it into words to explain it to you. It, the amount of chills and I'm still coughing up phlegm and this and that and the other thing. And, and it's, it's not been, a good experience like I mean I, of course being sick is not going to be a good experience but um this is this has been probably the sickest I've ever been and it's been it's I'm still exhausted I mean I I just went out and did the uh the livestock chores and now I'm sitting down on the porch here I would be on porch couch but we got two inches of rain and it got a little wet last night so not going to be sitting on porch couch when it's wet. Um, it's it's been quite an interesting few months with the uh, with the COVID, with uh, cleaning out my father in law's house. That was uh, that was a lot to do. Um, on the on the plus side of cleaning out my father in law's house. I have acquired a lot of really old woodworking tools from 100, 150 years ago. Uh, hand planes, hand saws, nice chisels, um, uh, just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I mean, saws to cut down trees, saws to... You name it, I got it. Um, I picked up a couple of sides at, uh, the guy on Craigslist was selling them. So I've got a few sides now. And basically what I'm going to be doing is kind of changing gears here on, on this channel. Um, a lot of what I've been doing has been using... A lot of modern equipment, um, a lot of power tools, 
And my son and I are actually gonna be building uh, tool sheds this year, in addition to working on the oyster farm together. And I will do videos on, you know, this is how you frame, this is how you roof, this is how you build a shed, uh, with, it's gonna be power tools and that kind of stuff. But as far as my personal life, I guess you could call it, I am changing gears and I am looking to do things in essence, as though it were 100, 150 years ago. Um, there's something to be said for, if you look at society today, um, everybody belongs to, well, I mean, a lot of people belong to gyms, and they go and they work out. What's the, what's the main thing in that? What do they do? They're working out. You didn't need gyms a hundred years ago. I mean, you were doing everything by hand, by, by person power, man power, woman power, whatever. So I have been, uh, before COVID hit, I have been taking a four foot cross cut saw. One, one two man cross cut saw. And I'll do a video on that and how to sharpen it and everything. I've been taking that out in the swamp behind our house and I've been harvesting blowdown and I've been taking wedges and splitting it so that I can make wood planks out of it and I'm going to use those I've got uh, a bunch of a bunch of different projects I want to start making in the house start uh, changing over our furniture from the mishmash that I've acquired over the years to, um, it's going to be a lot of shaker style furniture and that kind of stuff. And I'm going to be using, uh, primarily hand tools to do it. And I'll do videos on that. That'll be, uh, that'll be something that I think people will enjoy and I know I'll enjoy it. Um, what I'm trying to do is live a life where I won't need to specifically work out. Um, where I don't need to worry about being in shape because I'm kept in shape by what I'm doing. And a big part of that too is you can set up machines to do anything. I mean, you can do all different sorts of stuff with table saws and routers and, and a radial arm saws. I love my radial arm saw. I, I mean, it, I, I, I still like power tools. I still use power tools. But it gets to a point where basically the tool, you, you set it up and it's set up in such a way that You've got jigs and you've got all these different things that just make it foolproof. You just pull the saw or you push the wood or whatever. And it uh, it makes it so that it's doing it for you. Um, the tools that I have now that I acquired from my father-in-law's property, you got to know how to use them. you got to... Um, you got to really take the time and the energy to figure out okay I got to I got to move my body like this to make this work properly. And I'm not saying I know how to do that. I, I there's some things I know how to do, there's some things I don't. And it's going to be a, a learning experience and I'm excited for it. Uh, I'm also excited for the fact that it's going to allow me to be more in touch with what I'm doing. Um, for years, I cut lawns for my father. He, he owned a landscaping business and then he passed away and my, my brother runs it now. And due to a bunch of reasons, I, I don't have contact with my family anymore. Um, but that's neither here nor there for this video. I, um, I, I spent a lot of time 
using internal combustion engines to cut lawns, to blow leaves, to weed whack, to you name it. I did it with an internal combustion engine. And I have a lawnmower. I have a weed whacker. I have a chainsaw. I have all of these tools. And I do use them. I That's how I cleared the area where I'm going to be doing where I'm putting in the orchard. I've got some peach, uh, some peach, some pear trees, some apple trees in there. I'm going to be adding peach trees, that kind of stuff. A bunch of blueberry bushes in there. Um, I do use power tools when, uh, when I feel it's appropriate. I am trying to change that for it to be more appropriate for me to use hand-powered person pa meat powered meat powered tools and um the reason for that is i, I want to feel a connection to what i'm doing i it, you can it, you can buy a cnc machine now and you type in a bunch of stuff on a computer this little arm moves with a router and it makes whatever you want it to make. Um, there's a skill to that, I guess, knowing how to use the computer. My, my son could probably do it and, and do well with it. But it's the machine doing everything. You're telling it through the keys what to do, but that's the end product is product is made by a machine not by a person and I feel for me personally and for my family I feel like there's something missing with that kind of stuff there's no you, you didn't go out into the woods you didn't cut it down you didn't split it out of the tree you didn't stand there and, and use your own power to create this thing you used technology to do it and obviously i know the technology i'm going to be using is um at one time it was cutting edge it was it was the very best of what was available and uh there's really no way to escape that you're always going to have to use some sort of technology that's that's what i would call the human predicament you um you're a natural being, you're a, a, a being created in the image of God. And one of your strengths as a human, because I mean, we, we're not covered in fur, we don't have claws or anything like that. We're not, we're not made to, we're not made for a specific purpose. Like a, a tiger is made to hunt. Uh, a camel is made to exist in the desert based on what they have already we we have our minds and we have our our ability to figure things out and make things and that's that's what we do so there's going to be some use of technology no matter what you're doing i mean even even cavemen would nap flint and the volcanic glass into into rudimentary tools for themselves and um that's what humans do. We use tools. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to take the human aspect out of it. And what I mean by that is... If you... And I've been learning this as I've been doing this. If you go out into the woods and... You know, you bring, you bring your cross-cut saw, you bring your axe, you bring your wedges, you bring your, your rifle in case something you want to eat pops up. And um, you go out there and you, and you do this. That you make a day out of this. Like, I got up, I did my chores, I, I did my devotions in the Bible, and now I'm going to go out and I'm going to do uh, what I need to do in the woods to get some, some wood, to do some woodworking. You really... And I'm not saying this to sound like I'm, I'm better than everybody. Because I, I know I'm, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm better than everybody. But you got to be committed to it. You got to you got to want to go and do it. 
and um and a lot of times when I'm out there, it's like, yeah, maybe it would be easier to go to Home Depot and get a couple of pieces of wood that way. But this allows me to have a connection to what I'm doing. The same way when I'm gardening, and don't worry, there's still going to be a lot of gardening videos. Um, I don't want to be using power equipment anymore to do that. I I loved... Uh, when my church brother Chris Grissom came over with the with the um, his machine there, the rototiller, it was great. It was fun to use. It was it was fun to have some fellowship like that and to you know work work together in the the garden there. But I've set things up now in a form of gardening known as hugel culture, which I'll get into. It's mound culture where I'm not going to be rototilling. I'm not going to be tilling of any kind. It's actually going to be a no-till garden. And I've gone to that form of gardening for a couple of reasons. One, we've been having very dry summers. And um, last last year was a bad, bad summer. It was not a productive growing season for me at all. And um, that hurt. There was, there was a lot of... Uh, a lot of frustration, a lot of aggravation, and a lot of pain because I rely on my garden for food. It's not, it's, it's a hobby, but it's more than a hobby. It's, um, it's something that I do because I want to create and do for myself. And when it didn't work, this past summer that that was it was difficult to know that all right I'm gonna have to go and buy potatoes all right I'm gonna have to go and buy these vegetables that I'm used to having canned and in a in a root cellar and that kind of stuff so I looked at the way they do things they did things years ago in drier areas and the hugel culture seemed to fit. So I spent all this time digging holes and filling them with rotten wood and compost and poop and everything else. And um, I, that's how I'm going to be doing my garden from now on. I'm still working on the stone wall there when I have a chance and when I have the energy. I'm starting to get better from the COVID, so I'll be doing more. Thank God. I'll be doing more outside again. Um, but basically what I'm looking to do with this channel is explore a different way of living than I'm used to, than I'm comfortable with, and share that with people who want to do the same thing. I, um... Big Jeep going by. And another Jeep behind it. Um, I have hit a point in my life where I want to enjoy every aspect of what I'm doing. I want to use my strength and my weaknesses to create and to enjoy the world around me. I Another reason I didn't make a phone, not a phone, a video for a long time was the last phone I had got completely destroyed. And I'm always telling my son, I, I live a vigorous life. They should make a phone that, that stands up to my vigorous life. And um, of course it drives him crazy, but that's part of the fun. Um, I, it, the, the screen got completely destroyed. It was like all cracked and there were big black spots on it and stuff and you couldn't use it. Because I always, I'll keep it in the front of my overalls so I can listen to music on it and that kind of stuff and it falls out and a rock rolls over it or whatever. Or I keep it in my back pocket and I sit on something and it breaks and 
it's just the way it is. I, I mean, I, I'm not a person who should have a phone, I guess you should say, you could say. Um, and it's because I'm trying to live in a way where I do it with my own strength, with my own body, with my own mind in such a way that uh, allows me to um, to provide for my needs and, and the different things that I want to do. I know this is going long now and that probably not a lot of people are even going to watch it, but um, I'm going to be showing more of living with less, I guess you could say. Um, I've gone back to to baking our bread. I every day I, I make sourdough bread now. I'm going to be setting up an outdoor cooking area. I, I've got a lot of plans and a lot of things that I'm looking to share on this channel after I after I get them done and in the process of getting them done. So this is just an update to say I'm still alive. <laughs> And I hope wherever you are, you're comfortable and that God is with you. Thank you.